Greetings, my noble knights, as I blaze Templar. And I'm still ill, unfortunately. I've been fighting this gunk. Um, I have managed to get some medication, over-the-counter stuff, so hopefully that'll start kicking in. I got it last night, and I need to take it more than I have been. But regardless, uh, the CDL, Chill Draft League, starts this week, or has started this week. The first battle has actually gone down. Um, and hopefully this evening I'll be able to have my battle with my opponent. Uh, I don't know for certain, but this is the team against him. And we are going to be facing off against Incineroar, Mesprit, Blastoise, Decidueye, Gudra, Hariyama, Mawile, Quillfish, Raichu, Snorlax, and Zygarde. 10%. Now this is an RU and below league, and I gotta admit, RU is really not a format I've played in a long time. So I could be in a bit of trouble, but... Uh, looking at his team, he does have quite a number of ground weaknesses, fair number of fairy weaknesses, um, and a decent number of ice weaknesses as well. So that's something to consider. But anyway, uh, I figured fully offensive Cloyster with the White Herb would be a really nice uh, offensive Pokemon to just kind of clean things up uh, later game. I'm actually not running Stealth Rock, which I wanted to, but... I guess not this week. <laughs> anyway, regardless, um, since I'm not running hazards, that is going to put me in a bit more of a tough situation, but hopefully the other team members can deal with it. I mean, I do have three Pokemon weak to rocks, um, but at the same time, I do have Hitmonchan, which is my spinner. Anyway, moving on, uh, Cloyster, as long as I can get past uh, a couple of his Pokemon, the... Mawile and the Quillfish are probably the two biggest problems. Um, Cloyster can pretty much sweep his entire team no problem. Hariyama could pose a problem, but if he's fully defensive, uh, he can't one-shot my Cloyster. If he's a mech set, he could, but again, I'm going to have to just see what he brings in that regard. Uh, I want to leave Cloyster for the late-game sweep, since it really can clean up the job nicely. So, yeah, and he doesn't really have a whole lot of priority outside of Periyama and Mawile, uh, and I guess fake out on a couple of different Pokemon, so he's not come... Oh, and Zygarde. Wow, he actually has a lot of priority now that I'm looking over his team. That could pose a problem, but I have a base 180 defense stat, so that helps in that regard, and I am running some defense investment this time around as... Uh, 214 speed apparently outspeeds Choice Scarf Mesprit after the Shell Smash. So, I can't complain about the added bulk. Anyway, uh, Yan Mega is next, and this Pokemon, after a single speed boost, will outspeed pretty much everything except Scarf uh, Raichu, and then after a second boost, it outspeeds that too, of course. And it just naturally gets that. Um, Bug Flying doesn't really offer a lot defensively. Uh, but it does have some really good offensive prowess. It is my second uh, hard-hitting Pokemon, offensively anyway. Um, I'm going to want to leave that just in case he brings a lot of like uh, physical attackers that are weak on the special side until late game, and then it can kind of clean up. So I'm leaving my options there uh, pretty open. Next is actually Honchkrow, which will probably be my wall breaker, the one who kind of opens up the game for me this week. Um, Brave Bird, Sucker Punch, those are kind of obvious moves. Superpower, mostly for the Snorlax and for the Incineroar. Um, although, I honestly could probably Brave Bird, Incineroar, and Snorlax after a Moxie boost or two. So, there's those. Um, we'll see how that goes. Last is actually a move I wouldn't normally run, but turns out Fire Emblem Z Heat Wave obliterates most mobile sets and the physically or especially defensive mobile sets which I don't think he's going to want to bring um, even if he does though it's going to leave a mark and honestly Honchkrow I mean mobile is probably going to be tempted to come into Honchkrow expecting to be able to take whatever Honchkrow wants to go for especially as it has the intimidate ability and uh, then going for the Fire MZ Heat Wave 
really could turn the game around, get me back up to neutral, attack, and put me in a really nice situation overall. So that's why I'm running that. Plus, it resists Sucker Punch. Overall, just a really good Pokemon for that. And so, could do a lot of really good work, and I'm looking forward to it. Next is Hitmonchan. It's more of a bulky, rapid-spin attacker. Um, I just want to keep it alive until I'm sure the, rat, uh, the Stealth Rocker is down especially until then plus it can hit hit on or it can hit Snorlax pretty hard it can hit Zygarde really hard with the ice punch uh, fire punch clears out Decidueye if it wants to come in and uh, deal with hit Chan. of course ice punch does too but fire punch also hits a number of his other things the set is unfortunately walled by quillfish little bit annoying but you know I'll, I'll have to deal. Uh, regardless, next is Quagsire. This is probably going to be my Quillfish check outside of uh, my Conch Grow or Yanmega. Probably Yanmega, since it does have Psychic. Uh, anyway, Quagsire unaware, so if he does manage to get a couple Sword Stances off with his uh, Mawile or Dragon Dances off with Zygarde or something, I'm not swept. Um, Scald. Encore to lock him into a move, recover to, well, stay healthy, and then Earthquake. Uh, mostly to hit things like his Incineroar, and so on and so, so forth. Um, does okay against Mega Blastoise, not great. But Porygon 2 kind of is my last Pokemon to kind of check the special attackers. It won't enjoy, of course it won't enjoy something like Aurasphere from Mega Blastoise, but... It can take a hit or two, uh, recover, toxic stall, um, and psych up. This is actually kind of a devious move for me to run on Porygon 2. I wasn't going to originally run P2, but then it uh, was suggested to me by one of the people on the Discord channel to run P2 this week. And then they suggested a certain offensive set, and I kind of liked it. But then I went, wait a second, I still need a special wall. And something that can force Whittle and stuff, plus something that can kind of deal with Snorlax if it's like a Curse Lax set. And turns out P2 is really good for that as it does carry the Psych up, so maximize its bulk instantly after Snorlax has been cursing over and over again. I mean, I have Quagsire, which kind of stops uh, Curse Lax too, but just kind of a devious set. Um, and after that psych up, if I win the War of Attrition, which between Toxic and Recover Stalling, I should be able to, um, especially with Quagsire there too, win that War of Attrition, and then uh, <laughs> you have to deal with a plus six defense, uh, physical defense, Porygon 2, which could be a real pain in the neck to say the least. So that's why I decided to be kind of devious there, run the uh, psych up that way just to be really quite, you know, vicious. And I was originally also going to run Trick Room, but looking at his team and my team, I really don't need to go first or last to do okay, I think, this week. So that's kind of the team setup I've got at the moment. I think I have some kind of devious plays. Uh, especially with that psych up. So hopefully it pays off. And if not, well, it, at least prepared for the worst case scenarios. So we'll see. Um, I might have over predicted with that. I hope I didn't. If I did, you can tell me in the comments I was being an idiot. But you know what? Oh, well. Anyway, talk to you on the actual battle when it, <coughs> when it comes out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, goodbye.